All right, I am back. Okay, so I did the workable fixative. I took it outside, I laid it flat, and I did three layers. I just went back and forth like this three times. Okay. Three times like that. And then let it dry for like five minutes, and then you can come back and then touch it. And then, um, which you want to get it to a point so that when you rub your hands on it, you don't get any color coming up. Okay, so that's important. A little bit is okay, but for the most part, you want it to. You want your hands to stay clean when you come over it. And also, the fixative adds a layer of grit, so it feels kind of like a light sandpaper almost, which will be great for getting more layers of oil pastel. And so now we're ready to continue on with the painting. All right, so there we have. Okay, here's my oil pastels. All right, so let's start grabbing some colors out. So we know we're gonna use a lot of grays. Okay, so some different kinds of grays there. And for that grass, I'm thinking some of these greens. Um, here, let's look at the color of the grass. Okay. So I'll just try to find a green here that'll work. Maybe this one. And then maybe even that. Just kind of make your best guess on that. And then we need a dark, or we need some browns, of course. So let's bring out some browns. And this is a, this is not black. This is actually a dark gray. And um, most of these are going to be either Neo Pastels or Mungios. I don't have a lot of Mungios left as I'm kind of going through my stash of Mungios, but let's bring some browns and we'll bring in this cocoa color, hot chocolate brown right there. And then some of the darks, we'll use the blue. So I have a dark blue there and like a Prussian blue type or some darks. Okay, that's a good start. And we'll probably pull some more off as we go through it, but something, something like that. This is a Mungio, kind of a cool blue. We might use this. All right. So most of the brands here I'm using, I used up to five different brands, but most of what I have here is going to be the Neo Pastels, Mungio, and Van Gogh's. Is what most of these are going to be. I haven't used any scents yet. Here we'll. I like to say the sen the sends for um, Sennelier's, pronouncing that right, for the top, the top layer, right? Because they're the softest. Okay, so let's start. Where we're we gonna start here? So I think I'm gonna start with the grass. I think I'm just gonna kind of work on that right now and kind of get. If you look at the the painting here, we have this long shadow which I didn't I didn't put in here yet. We have this long shadow and um, kind of this rolly landscape here. It kind of rolls like these little mounds here of grass and even some trees back in there. You can see that. So let's see if we can get some of this grass. I might even pull some of this here with it. Let's just try a couple of these and see what we can get. All right. All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to start at the top here and um, I'm going to bring in this cocoa here for the, the distant stuff back in there. I can't really see what it is, but it's definitely an area that's not grass. Okay, and so the grass kind of, there's like this little hill kind of thing, it goes like that. Right, and the surface is really great right now because it's kind of the sandpapery type of feel. So the oil pastel just comes right off. It's easy to get the color down, um, and I can get layers with it. All right, and it comes down here, and then the road here kind of comes together and kind of just kind of just disappears back in there. Right, and here's part of that road 
here that then mixes in with the grass and then here all right and then we have a shadow that goes across but i'm not going to worry about that right at this second mostly just finding where that or the little hill parts of the grass are going to be all right and then we can take this green it's kind of this really light green here and kind of define hopefully if I can define some of the way that the land kind of rolls here different variations of green a shadow there that comes across highlighted area and then this green here Let's bring another one maybe this one here it's kind of this greenish gray that in over here it's really faded out that's more of this tannish kind of khaki-ish color here in this part I'm just trying to get the colors to match up a little in this this part this is where the oil pastel can kind of get real closer a lot closer to the actual colors that I'm looking for and just kind of layering sticks on top of each other all right and it's kind of light in here comes across here. Where is that light one again? If I hope I didn't lose it. It's right here. It's right in front of me. I was just using it. Keep my camera on my work here. Very important. It's one thing I have to really remember here to do. Oh man, I haven't made a video in a long, long time, so I apologize for kind of disappearing there for a little bit, but um, I kind of just took a break from a lot of things for a while here, as I uh, got really sick in March, and in April had surgery, I had appendicitis, and um, and then uh, was just sick for pretty much most of the end of March and pretty much April, all of April. And I just kind of stopped everything in my life. I, I couldn't even go to work. I had to take a leave and take a break and decided to just focus on my health. So I've been doing a lot of walking, took up walking, and uh, which has been amazing. Is now I'm walking every day for you know three four miles sometimes six or seven miles just depending on how I feel but uh, I'm noticing the health benefits of walking regularly not only physically beneficial but even mentally probably even more beneficial mentally um, which has been really helpful for me and um, 
found out that I have a tumor in my liver. I found that out when I was um, going through my procedure to get my appendix removed. They found a mass in my liver on a CAT scan. And so, um, which was a big surprise, but it kind of answered some questions that I had about myself and why I feel certain things, some certain pains in my side. And now I know what it's from. Um, but it was, you know, scary, but also am happy that the tumor I have is benign. Um, well, 99% of these are benign. And um, <clears throat> even though I haven't um, had a biopsy on it yet, I've um, doctors have told me that 99% of the type of tumor that I have is, they are benign, so they're not too concerned about it. But, um, you know, it's still pretty scary, right, to have something like that in your body. So had another caps get done in uh, June and uh, confirmed that I do have a mass there in my liver some of the, the upper right quadrant of my abdomen is where it's at it's about the size of a large marble and uh, so now the next step is I see I get to see a gastroenterologist here in October which will hopefully get me some more clarity on what's going on and what the next steps are going to be but I'm anticipating at some point here I'm going to have a surgery I just don't really know when that'll be um, I hope soon because I want to get it out of my body obviously I don't want that in there but I just don't know how long I'll have it for so anyway that's been kind of my my issues, health issues. Um, so yeah, I just been kind of taking this break. Kind of just stopped painting for a while. Um, kind of fell into depression for a little bit. And um, decided to just take a break from a lot of things and focus on my health. So walking's been amazing, and now I do it every day, and uh, my wife will, will join me, and she's gotten a lot of benefit from it too, with her, her own health, mental issues. So I never thought that walking would be beneficial mentally, but I've learned here that it has, has been really beneficial. And now I, uh, I actually start my day off by going on a good walk. Well, I'll go for like a two and a half mile, three mile. I'll walk my dog again for another mile. So before noon, I'm at, I'm at usually three and a half, four miles of walking. And then oftentimes I'll do an afternoon walk and sometimes I'll do a big walk and go for like seven miles and try to push my, my speed, if you, if you will. Okay, so we're kind of defining here the, the back part of this painting with some of the way the grass and kind of the landscape kind of rolls here, how the road just kind of disappears on us. So that's what I'm trying to get at here. I just add a little bit more details, I'm trying to pinch that road here as we go back into it. So that's why I've been gone to have been disappeared from my YouTube channel so sorry for those folks out there that want to see more videos I just needed to take a good break if you know what I mean just kind of recharge I guess right All right, so let's start a shadow here. So let's try to find that shadow. I'm just going to use a blue, this Prussian blue for a, a distant shadow here that kind of comes across the scene back in here. All right, it's like a tree or something that's out of view, but the shadow.
shadow of it is uh, coming across the top of that road up here. It kind of continues and it kind of fades out here. Okay. All right, so we'll just pretend that is a distant tree that's casting a shadow going across the back part of that. Kind of fades out. Here there is a tree that's popping up. Let me get a brown. There's a tree right here. Just a little tree that pops up. There's another one that kind of goes right there. And some distant ones kind of back in this. There's like a little forested area back in there. Right, some distant trees and whatnots. I like to use this method. I've been using this oil pastel over new pastel method for several years. I discovered it for myself. Um, gosh, it's been a long while, I guess. I don't know. What year is it? 2000? Maybe a good seven, eight years. And um, I find it an effective wet method to extend oil pastels. And to not only that, but to save them so you're not going through them so fast. And so I find that the best paper for this method is the pastel mat. But you can use it on other papers. It's just got to be a nice, thick, durable paper that's able to take some layers. And pastel mat, I think, is the best for it. But I've also used Arches Cold Press, and even some watercolor papers can, can do well with this method. Okay. And it's just a good way, like I said, to extend your oil pastel so you're not having to buy them as often, right? Because you can do a lot of that initial work with the new pastel and um, save your oil pastels so you don't have to, you know, replace as often. Okay, and there's a shadow for this tree here. Something like this. There's a one for that one. Right, these long shadows here in the back. And then try to find the way this landscape kind of flows. to work top to bottom for the most part I think for the most part all right there's a real light area right here all right and let's get out that khaki tan color I like to call it khaki but yeah anyway something like that this is where that road kind of kind of disappears on us here is it All right, and then the, this kind of cocoa color here to find some of these tread marks. Uh, good to be back guys and um, just wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on with my life I actually submitted a video about my health issues back a while but then I took it down because I thought it was kind of silly and uh, I don't know I just when I watched it again I was like why am I doing this people don't need to know what my what's going on but it's 
so I took it down. Um, <clears throat> try not to do the whole feel sorry for me kind of stuff, you know what I mean? All right. Because my issue is uh, solvable with some surgery here, so very grateful that I don't have um, like a malignant tumor or anything real serious where it's life-threatening. At, at first I thought it w was going to be, but um, learned quickly that that I, I'm going to be okay. Highlight this light green is good for that highlight part of the grass where the sun hits, hits it, kind of lights it up a little. Okay, and you can even you can even use it to kind of draw little blades of grass here. All right, <coughs> we'll add more shadow to that to make that make make more sense there, but. <coughs> So I just use a Prussian blue for, for the shadows here and uh, just very light kind of scrubbing over and you can get effects of like branches and things yeah, with that. And then um, and also you can use this Prussian blue as your mid, your mid uh, what I like to call is you have different kinds of darks. You have your, your darkest dark and you have what I call is your mid value dark. Right, it's your dark that's kind of in the middle values, and that's what I like the Prussian blue for a lot. Is I can define the mid value darks with it. Okay, usually these are the darks that are further away from us, or the darks that might be underwater. Okay, right, because your your darkest darks are going to be in the front here of the painting, right? But as things recede, as, as objects go further away from the viewer, those darks aren't as dark, and so you use a mid-value dark like this for that. Okay, hope that under, you guys understand what I'm talking about. It might make sense for you. All right, so you have some different darks there. You can see where the road kind of meets the grass. It's kind of all choppy, and then you can even see in some respects, here's some tire, some tire treads, tire tread marks there as the tires have made divots into the mud. Right, so you can just kind of draw some little faint lines to kind of indicate that. <clears throat> All right, get the idea of that. And if you ever need to change the value of what you put down, you can just always put the color down and then you take your finger and you kind of
kind of smudge and that changes the strength of the color right kind of fades it out a little bit too right we see that road kind of kind of just disappear on us all right and then right in here I can see some highlights going with this kind of khaki color. It's a good highlight color for this right now. This is a Neo Pastel it's kind of this tannish gray color. Comes in really helpful for highlights, dirt, ground, you know, stuff like that. I'll bring it even right up to the foreground here. <clears throat> it's a little bit wider as we get to closer to the foreground area. of this two different variations of brown you got the dark where the water is right and then you have the lighter where the sun's hitting the top of that so I'm going to use some different variations of these cocoa brown first we'll just kind of get the base of it in there good to paint again really does I tend to um, <clears throat> you know just kind of stop it sometimes but it's, it's good to uh, recharge right especially when you're going through something kind of get focus again so we're just using this cocoa this is another neo pastel and it's kind of this hot chocolate kind of cocoa color brown and I like it for, again, dirt, earth, trees. Um, this dirt road is perfect for this. It's got a nice uh, tone to it. Okay. Kind of go through and kind of put this in there. down to the foreground kind of faded into the grass here as it kind of meets the grass it kind of there's no clear clean edge as grass is kind of growing all around the area it kind of comes in here and then I'm gonna lift this up here a little bit move with that up <clears throat> okay and we'll work some of this foreground with this cocoa brown color So yeah, paintmyphoto.com. It's a great website. Great for finding like really good pictures to paint from. If you ever need reference and you're trying to figure out where to go on the website or the internet to find copyright free 
images to paint from. Paintmyphoto.com is a great site for stuff like that. And I like the relationship between photographer and artist where you're not just using some random photo, you're using a photo that was submitted by a photographer. And, um, you know, and then when you do the painting, you then link it back to their photo and, you know, people can comment on it. And it's just a really cool idea, I think. And um, I joined a few, several years ago, actually, and started um, just doing a lot of my paintings from that site because I'd find some really nice photos to paint from and thought it was a great resource. And so I created my account. And so I have probably, I don't know, hundreds maybe a hundred or so paintings there uploaded and um, it's just a great resource to uh, to find some some good some good photos to paint from all right so this kind of comes up here And then there's groups. So there's like a landscape group. There's all kinds of groups. There's nautical group, landscape group, acrylic group, oil painter group, watercolor group. There's an oil pastel group, soft pastel group. And so you can get involved in groups and then they have different challenges for the groups that you become involved with, which is really cool. So you get to collaborate share your paintings with other people that are using the same medium as you participate in monthly challenges there's critique if you want to submit a painting and have people critique it so ways that you can improve upon you can do that um, it's just really a cool resource and to you know connect with other people that are also using the same medium as you so there's also you know of course there's a oil pastel group and that's the one that I administer I'm the administrator of that group that I was I just took it over just from the last couple of months and the group kind of died and there wasn't any participation in it and it kind of just fell fell to the wayside and I was then someone there asked me if I would like to administer the group and I said yes and so I kind of I'm trying to bring it back to life and trying to get people to go participate and so it's just a uh, love it if you guys hopped on over to there paint my photo found the oil pastel group joined it and then just kind of join in with the challenges I got one going right now and this is part of it it's called objects underwater challenge where we do a painting has water in it like it can be a lake or a pond or a river but you can see through the water water and you can see stuff underneath the water like rocks and logs and maybe a sunken boat or you know whatever I chose a puddle right we can see the mud and underneath the, the sediment underneath the water because I, f I figured that would be a nice challenge and um, so yeah and then uh, then you can connect with other people like you and <clears throat> it's just cool to cool to be part of a community like that all right you can see I'm kind of going over with this cocoa color kind of defining the areas of the mud that are not underwater right obviously the dark brown is where the water is going to be Sorry if the camera is a little shaky. Sometimes I I shake a little bit too much. I have to just remind myself to not move around so much. All right, so in here we do have some of this brown. in with the gray probably to really make it 
this brown is working. It's doing what I need it to do. step back and kind of see where we're at see I need a lot more gray right this looks a lot more gray to me than what I have right now but we'll get there Ooh, my foot is kind of spasming out right now all right um yeah let's, let's find a gray actually maybe this one I kind of want more of a warmer gray so it might actually be this khaki color here that's going to be kind of the highlights let's see what that gray on top it will look like it needs to be a little that might actually work there's grays that lean cool and there's grays that lean warm so I'm trying to find the one that kind of leans more warm this actually might be a better one for it. I don't even know what that is. Maybe a Mungio? Maybe. I'm not sure. There's a strong highlight right there. It fades as it goes into the water okay, another highlight here you got you know grooves from the tires that go th the tire marks that go here and it creates these grooves <clears throat> to adding my darks again kind of redefining again back with the darks okay let's try that so remember we had the mid value dark which is like this Prussian blue right remember so they get two times of darks so there's the Prussian blue darks you can define kind of the edges here with that with kind of the middle value darks Okay, and then you have your darker darks. Darker darks gonna be a darker blue. Or you can use black. I tend to use the darker blue. I think black's a little strong sometimes for, sometimes it goes too dark. Okay, and you can see, you start getting a stronger shadow with it a little bit. Right, because 
is basically a shadow of the grass here that's coming across the road a little. <clears throat> and then there's a stronger shadow right, right in here. Right in the foreground area. shadow here you gotta think about you know where your darks are right you gotta think about and how dark those darks are and then just kind of find the right sticks for those For underwater darks, I kind of use we'll say sometimes the same, but I'll, then I'll take it with my finger and really smudge the value of it, change it, so it's not so um, strong, right? Because the darks underwater aren't aren't as prominent as the darks above the water. You gotta keep that in mind. <coughs> objects underneath the water like there's maybe some rocks some leaves that have sunken down in there right and those items create a shadow right so you gotta add those little details in there right and all these little marks just end up kind of working kind of creating that illusion getting at there. <laughs> kind of tire tread marks. get that effect. I don't know if that's really effective though. And some shadows in the grass, clumps of grass area. Okay. Just kind of move around. You find those darks as I'm looking over here and just kind of find those and just make your best guess on that stuff. to be the grass, the shadow of the grass as it is cast across the road there. Little objects, rocks underneath the surface of the water. get the get the idea and um, add a little more details I see more and more as I kind of go through and pan and pan my reference image I see more and more little little details little shadows okay you just kind of add those in as you see them Slowly and slowly, just kind of all come. 
comes together, kind of just all works. Maybe this part here is sticking above up out of the water a little bit, right? Part of the mud there sticking out of the water, so it's a little bit lighter color. So you see, I just kind of keep going through it, just adding these little details like this. And if I need to change value, it's just a quick smudge of my finger. You can change values real easily, the color you're putting down. figure out those tire treads and how to make those look realistic. this I gotta go to the store and get a bunch of groceries and stuff so I'm trying to knock out a painting before I have to do a bunch of stuff all right let's take a look at it here kind of step back I gotta work on the sky reflections a lot. I haven't really touched that yet. Um, <clears throat> we're getting there. Work on this grass here also. Put a little bit more highlights here where some of these clumps are. Forty-eight minutes on this segment, so maybe I can finish this in three, three and a half hours. Not too bad. So trying to get the you know kind of individual little grass blades and highlights of that. And then you have two different kinds of greens, so because I can see some grass here. some grass right here. Okay, where that mar uh, light mark is and a bunch of the grass. Little bunches of grass in the road. stronger green probably for this area certain areas here kind of a stronger more vibrant green 
mostly here at kind of this front part section. You can see a little bit more color. Because as things go away, the colors of things kind of drift out. Right. This is a uh, moon, or no, this is a neo pastel. So it's nice and soft, lays just right over the top of all of this very easily. You don't have to. That's the nice thing about working in layers, is you can just layer like this very easily. You're not battling the paper or the pastel itself. You can just go right over the top. <coughs> Stronger greens here in the f kind of the foreground area. All right, we're getting, we're making great progress with all of this. kind of middle section you don't really see blades of grass just more of the tone of it has changed so I can use the same color but more use a swipe you know kind of a broad motion like this rather than individual little grass blades like this in the front shadows working now let's try to work on more in a brown this brown here I kind of like the way it already is I think I'm just gonna take this um, this is a neo pastel I'm just kind of go over it a little bit kind of 
bring out the warm, the warmer, warmer brown color that I see in the water here. It almost has like a hint of green in, in it as well, but um, kind of bring that over here in some parts. section here. Yep, bring some of this warm brown in certain spots. Then for those little objects that are underneath the water, you can see the shadow of it right there. We can then add a little bit of a highlight to, to some of those. Okay. This little under the water little objects. little rocks or leaves or whatever's kind of underneath the water just kind of hits the light a little little details kind of bring things home darker shadows are here. Right here in the kind of the front section. Kind of put those down in there. little shadows and um, let's touch up the water too a little it's starting to look really good right looking a lot like the photo reference okay let's find that lavender or that ultramarine blue color I'm gonna clean my hands actually we're gonna take a break we're at about an hour so let's take a break this is where I'm at okay Here's the reference. Well, we're getting pretty close. I just had a few more details here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break.